What would the 2024 AFL ladder have looked like if you went back through every single close game this year and reversed the result? So the team that lost actually won. This could be my best video idea in some time. Except I didn't think of it. I blatantly am giving all the credit to Lock7451 for giving me this great video idea. So Lock commented a little while ago suggesting I do a video if I can map out the season on Squiggle and change the result of all the thrillers. How would that impact the ladder? And I replied, I don't think that's possible on Squiggle. But to Lock's credit, he's come through with the goods. He's explained to me how you do it. Today's video, we're going to go through every single thriller that happened in 2024 specifically games that were six points or less. If we change the winner, let's have a look at the impact on the ladder. And what does it tell us? It, well, it gives you a good idea of which teams were actually close to finishing much higher or much lower in 2024. So once again, thank you very much, Locke. I'm gonna execute on your idea. You get all the credit. So here we are in Squiggle and uh, let's crack straight into it. So as you can see, I can go through all the results here and edit the final result, which is an awesome little feature. So we'll start off with uh, opening round. We'll move through. We'll try not to miss any and change change some results. So you got Carlton here. They will just change the result to the same margin. So let's say Brisbane won that game by one point. And you can see that Brisbane move up into third and Carlton uh, down in 10th there. So we'll keep moving through. Then we've got the very next week, Carlton for the second week in a row will have their result changed and Richmond actually win that game by one point. Looking through, everything else was um, seven points or more, eight points or more in round one. So we'll move down to round two. St. Kilda Collingwood, okay, that's 19 points. No thrillers so far in this week. We're up to round three now. Uh, here, we got Essendon versus St. Kilda. Uh, Essendon won this game by four points. What if St. Kilda had won it by four points? Anything quirky happening on the ladder? We see St. Kilda move a little bit closer up. We see Carlton down in 11th. We'll keep going. Port Adelaide and Melbourne with seven points. I'm going to leave that alone for the time being. But Sydney, Sydney, I have a feeling going to actually improve quite a lot because they had a few close losses this year. Richmond, they got a win back against Carlton. They're going to lose this game by five points instead. Moving down here, a lot of these were 10 points. Freo Carlton went down to the wire, but it is 10 points, so I can't change that result, unfortunately. But the Bulldogs and Geelong, I can. So Geelong actually lose that game by four points to the Western Bulldogs. Bulldogs moving up into the top four as we go. Obviously, every other result is set in. Uh, we're just changing specific ones. St. Kilda, seven-point win over Richmond. That one stays in the system. However, Hawthorne actually claimed this victory in Gather Round over Collingwood. Instead of losing it by five points, they win by five points. Any other thrillers here? St. Kilda, again, I feel like St. Kilda are going to start benefiting from this significantly here. They lost by one point. I feel like they keep like the last five goals of that game, and now they'll actually claim a victory here over the Giants. This is interesting. And St. Kilda move up into the eight, and we're only about five rounds in. We'll see how that plays out. Carlton, oh, their two-point loss to Adelaide. That was such a weird result at the time. I think that was Adelaide's first win of the season or something. They actually claimed this one back. So we, we robbed them of two wins. We'll give them one back here. Port Adelaide versus Fremantle, as much as it pains me, we have to change this result. Uh, Fremantle got so close to beating Port Adelaide. That was a ripping game. They'll claim this one by three points. They don't get the Carlton one back, but they do get their Port Adelaide one back. Adelaide versus Essendon. Essendon, when Sam Draper sat on the football, or, uh, yeah, he put his stomach on it and laid on it, um, that is instead paid a free kick, and Adelaide go ahead and kick a goal. Adelaide move by three points. What else we got here? couple of one-sided games. The draw ha obviously has to stay. We can't really reverse that. There's no point giving it to one team over the other. The draw will stay intact as we move down here. Port by 10 points. What else have we got? We have, oh, we have a six-point game here. I did say six points or less, so that includes six-point margins. Carlton get one back, so there's some equi equilibrium restored there. Melbourne beat Geelong by eight points. That will stay intact, although another one of those quirky results when you look back across the season. Hawthorne keep that win by seven points, but Carlton lose this one-point game. Instead, the Demons claim this back. Oh, this was a heroic win by Port Adelaide, sort of. They got like eight goals in front at GMHBA, and uh, Geelong clawed it back. But instead, in this scenario, Geelong actually go over the top and win this game by six points. Hawthorne v St Kilda, that one has to become a St Kilda win. Gee, St Kilda really climbing the ladder. You have to really lament over some close losses this year, St Kilda. They move up into eighth position. Oh, we had a thriller between Collingwood and West Coast here. Uh, maybe I'll change that result. Nah, it's just over six points. My mistake. Okay, Adelaide and Brisbane was a draw. We can't change that. Collingwood versus Adelaide. Adelaide instead win this game by four points, and they move up a spot. We've now got Essendon in the bottom four. Bear in mind, there's still a bit to play out here. 
Uh, but the ladder is a little bit interesting here. You've got the Bulldogs really profiting. You've got the Brisbane Lions profiting so far. Port Adelaide versus Hawthorne. This was so close to being the other way. Instead, Hawthorne claimed the win here. I'm sure they'd love to reverse the semi-final result, but we can't do that here. Instead, Hawthorne move into the top four with a one-point win over Port Adelaide. Fremantle Collingwood, another draw. We did have a glut of draws around this time, didn't we? Ah, Geelong prevail this time at home. So a couple of close losses at GMHBA for Geelong have now been reversed, and they move up to second on the ladder. Just moving down the list here, we go a little bit of time without a six point or less result. Geelong versus Richmond. Richmond played pretty well in hindsight in that result. We got an eight point win over Adelaide, so we hold that. Uh, who else we got? Hawthorne over GWS. Instead, GWS wins, although I do remember later in the season we'll have to do the same thing um, for the other game they play. West Coast versus North falls agonizingly short of being six points. As an aside, I might actually go through and change all the 10 point results after this. Let's just do the six points for now. Uh, St Kilda instead lose at home to the Gold Coast Suns. The next thriller was Melbourne versus North Melbourne. I remember that. I think North Melbourne came home real hard late, didn't they? But let's say in this scenario, they actually win by three points. That, uh, well, it leaves them in the same position for now. Forgive me, I actually missed one here. I forgot about West Coast and Essendon. Uh, how could I forget that one? That actually benefits my team. Let's say West Coast win this by six points instead. Now we're up to Brisbane versus Melbourne at the Gabba. I remember the Ds playing so well that day. And let's say they win this game by five points. Oh, Sydney actually prevail over Fremantle here. This is where Sydney's win-loss ledger is likely to, to get flattered because they lost a bunch of close games. So Sydney win this by one point. Port Adelaide had a real scrappy win over St Kilda at Marvel Stadium. Instead, we give that to St Kilda. I feel like St Kilda lost a lot of close games this year. They're now in seventh. West Coast and Hawthorne, a thriller. I suppose we'll keep that in place for the time being. North Melbourne and Gold Coast, we have to give that to the Gold Coast Suns. St Kilda's two-point win over Sydney, this now works against them. So Sydney... Moved to 20 and 3 on the ladder. Adelaide versus Essendon. This was one of the games of the year. A real shootout. Josh Rochelle scored a goal late to win them the game. Let's give this to Essendon here. They need a win at this point. They're in the bottom four, and we do see them switch back on the ladder there. Brisbane versus Sydney. Again, we have to reverse the result, and Sydney move up to 21 and 2, which means the two losses were against the Bulldogs and Port Adelaide, which were beltings. Melbourne fell two points short against GWS. I actually don't even remember that game now. Geez, the season's gotten away from me a little bit. But Melbourne win this game by two points, and that actually drastically moves him up the ladder to ninth. So very different looking ladder. Geelong actually lose this game to the Adelaide Crows, which kind of evens up a little bit after they got a couple of home games given to them. They actually lose this one to the Crows by five points. Collingwood versus Carlton. This is where Mitch McGovern actually kicks straight and kicks a goal on Carlton, move up to sixth. Wow. GWS and Hawthorne will reverse that result. Uh, Hawthorne actually won here. I just noticed as well, Collingwood is now sitting in the bottom four. Can you believe that? Hawthorne in third, Western Bulldogs in second, Carlton sixth, St Kilda and Gold Coast. A vastly different top eight. Essendon and Fremantle, this is where, uh, who was it? Was it Durham kicked it behind late? Let's just say Fremantle did instead. And now Fremantle are in the top six. Sydney versus Collingwood, that's right, a big comeback game. Let's say they fall short this time. Okay, so now we have a third loss to Sydney here. Couple of close games here. Let's say, as much as it pains me, North Melbourne actually beat West Coast by five points. Oscar Allen kicks it out on the full with that last goal. Geelong prevailed by 11 points over Fremantle. Uh, Mac Andrew kicks it out on the full instead, and Essendon win this game by a point. That, that, that math doesn't work, but it's, let's just say it's one point. Melbourne versus Port Adelaide. This was an absolute stinker of a game, but let's say Melbourne won it. Two points. Melbourne, ah, Melbourne up into fifth. Collingwood versus Brisbane. Brisbane win the grand final replay, shooting Collingwood back into the bottom four here. West Coast and Carlton, another thriller here. Geelong, West Coast, ooh, probably a little bit too much of a margin. I keep, I, I'm going to drag that joke through. Uh, as far as I can tell, one more thriller for the rest of the year. Carlton actually prevail over St Kilda, and it couldn't have been much closer. See, that's the final ladder, unless I've missed any. And we'll go through again, because I'm going to have a look at the 10-point games too. But the Western Bulldogs and Hawthorne finished second and third, and interestingly... Like the form rankings of those two teams were probably around that by the end of the season. So I don't know if that's a coincidence. Uh, Brisbane in fifth, that's the exact same spot. Carlton, Melbourne and Fremantle all shooting into the eight. St Kilda marginally improving their position. Port Adelaide, wow. Port Adelaide down in 12th is possibly the biggest mover there. Collingwood down in 15th, another one. So Port Adelaide and Collingwood's ability to win close games in theory has had a huge impact on, on where they'd finish on the ladder this year. I realize it's not as simple as saying had these teams won close games, they would have finished here because in this scenario, every single close game is reversed. So that has a whole flow on effect for the ladder. But it's still interesting to see what it could have looked like 
if things had gone marginally different in every game. Other than that, the bottom three is still the same. Uh, should we do a little final series? So we say Sydney versus Geelong. I'll tip Sydney and Sydney. Brisbane at the Gabba. Carlton versus Melbourne, probably Carlton. Western Bulldogs, well, Hawthorne won that game, didn't they? Geelong versus Brisbane, you'd go the Cats. The Bulldogs to beat Carlton. And we're left with the final four of Sydney, Bulldogs, Hawthorne, Geelong. Now, Sydney did lose to the Bulldogs here, but I'm going to say the Swans and the Cats. So we're probably still going to end up with the same grand final, in my opinion. As I'm recording this, obviously, the, the prelims haven't happened yet. So let's go back and extend this to 10 points and see if it has an even more profound impact. So... Uh, as you can see, the white ones are the ones I've already edited, so I can just find here. St Kilda beating Geelong by eight points. Adelaide beating Gold Coast. Port Adelaide actually prevail here over Melbourne by seven points at Adelaide Oval. I did say 10 points or less, so Fremantle do get this win over Carlton now. And yeah, it went down to the dying stages anyway, so probably worthy. Fremantle up into fifth. Richmond get this win over St Kilda. There we go. So that is that's not enough to lift Richmond off the bottom yet. They're still on three wins. Melbourne versus Geelong in round eight is the next example I can find. And we'll change that to the Cats winning by eight points. So it's actually starting to even back up again. I feel like the teams like Melbourne, who went up the rankings with the six-point games, might start to come back down. It's going to be really hard to tell if I have missed many, but I'm doing my best here, guys. Fair few close games that result in like 11 or 12. We're going for 10 or under here. Um, so we're still moving down. That's a 14 points, Ooh, 92 points, 8 points. So Adelaide get this win back over Richmond. Aha, West Coast claim this win over North Melbourne. Okay, so we're tit for tat in that respect here, 9 points. Oh, North versus Collingwood. I missed the first time, so it's good that I've gone back here. So North actually get a 1 point win over Collingwood here, uh, which doesn't impact the ladder, but still. It's uh, justified. So we have to then go to round 21 to find the next 10 point or less, unless I'm going crazy and I missed it. And that actually means that Gold Coast beat West Coast here at the death to move up to 11th. Other than that, we got a 13.1 here. Um, oh, 11 points. So Geelong keep that victory over Fremantle in Perth, which ended up being crucial for them. Ah, Fremantle do claim a nine point win the next week against GWS. What does that do for them? Second place. Oh my God. So unless I'm going insane, that is every result that was 10 points or less. We have now reversed it. And this is the ladder. You got Sydney first, Fremantle second, the Bulldogs and Hawthorne still in the top four. Uh, Carlton make the eight. Port Adelaide back into the eight after falling out when we did the six points or less results. Collingwood in the bottom four. I suppose we knew them as a team that won close games and had they not done that this year, we would have seen a much lower finish on the ladder for them. GWS, similarly, their results in close games was a huge difference between them finishing you know, where they did in the top four and 13th on the ladder. So again, this is a little bit of fun. There's not too, meant to be too educational, but it does suggest some broader narratives that Fremantle dropped a lot of winnable games this year. Port Adelaide did relatively well on them because they, you know, they finished higher, well, they finished second on the ladder, had they not performed well in close games, they would have finished eighth. Again, so many different variables flying around. I realize that. And Collingwood as well uh, benefited a lot. Should we do another final series? We'll go Sydney over the Hawks, Geelong over Port, Brisbane over Carlton. Some of these are locked in. Fremantle to win a home game like they did in 2022. Cats probably at this point over Hawthorne, Bulldogs, or MCG final, I'll say the Bulldogs. And then we're, oh my God, Fremantle into a home prelim. I hate this. Well, they lost in Perth, so they'll lose to Geelong here <laughs> and Sydney Geelong again. So I've still got the same grand finalists. Anyway, guys, that was just a bit of fun. Thank you again to uh, Lock7451 for that great video suggestion. It was a lot of fun. I uh, hope you guys got something out of it. Let me know if you think it would be any point to reversing every margin of 60 plus more or more. <laughs> that would be interesting. Just let me know. Um, I may or may not do that video. But anyway, hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.